most of Sodor's diesel engines have learned to work alongside the steam engines and be really useful together. But there are still some diesels who haven't. Including Diesel 10, who hates steam engines the most. One day, an inspector was doing a checkup on the diesels. He turned to Zatapam Hat. What is this diesel mainly used for? he asked. Mostly picking up and loading debris from the trucks, said Zatapam Hat, with the occasional goods train. Not any passenger trains? asked the inspector. None that I could remember. Well, the warship class was designed to be pulling passenger trains, I'd say you should give this one a try. Hmm, said Zatapam Hat. Well, I shall think about it. Later, Sir Topham Hat spoke to Diesel 10. Now, Diesel, said Sir Topham Hat, I can't think of anything troublesome you've done. Well, um, since the Christmas decorations incident, what I've decided to give you a chance at a passenger train. Could you take the four o'clock train from Wellsworth to Great Waterton tomorrow? Well, of course, sir, replied Diesel 10. Well, all right, said Sir Topham Hat, and I'll trust that you'll do the job right. I'm not making the same mistake I made with Class 40 again. Sir Topham Hat then left, leaving Diesel excited and rearing for the next day. But in the morning, the engines woke up to a deep blanket of snow, more than they ever usually got. But that didn't dampen Diesel 10's mood. He was up early and ready for the day. But then, Sir Topham Hat came into the yard with some bad news. Last night's snowstorm has brought down some trees on the Normby branch line, and they need to be cleared immediately. So Diesel, I need you over there at once. But what about my train? spluttered Diesel 10. Well, I'll just have to get another engine to do it. Oh, uh, in fact, Thomas, after you're done with your jobs here, could you take the four o'clock from Wellsworth to Great Waterton? Oh, yes, sir. I'd be pleased to, said Thomas. Good, smiled Sir Tapham Hat. Now, Diesel, it's off to work with you. Those trees won't clear themselves. Heh, <laughs> sure, growled Diesel 10 as he reluctantly rolled away. Later, at the tree clearing site, Diesel 10 was reminded of how much he hated all the steam engines. Especially Thomas. The one time I have the opportunity to do something new and important, Thomas has to take it right from me, he thought. The job ended up getting done much earlier than expected, and Diesel 10 pushed away the loaded trees. Although he soon found that the branch line had not been plowed. Until he then came to Neville's Bridge, where a giant mound of snow stood. Oh well, said Diesel's driver. I guess we have to go back then. If we try to push our way through the snow drift, the snow will fall down onto the lines below. But this gave Diesel a devious idea. Thomas will have to come onto the bridge to get to Wellsworth, he said. But if the line is blocked, then he'll have to go the long way around. Meanwhile, I could be at Wellsworth, and when Thomas doesn't show up on time, they'll have me take the train. It's risky, said his driver, but if we don't get caught, I think we'll be fine. Diesel 10 then reversed back. He then accelerated forward and pushed the snow off the bridge and onto the tracks below. He rolled away, feeling smug and victorious. After he dropped off the trees, Diesel 10 roared down the line towards Wellsworth, feeling quite pleased with himself. But as he approached the bridge, however, he had to apply his brakes, as he realized that he had fallen into his own trap. There he was, trapped in front of his own snowdrift. Well, it looks like we took the wrong tracks, said his driver. Come on, Diesel, we have to go back. So Diesel 10 anxiously oiled backwards to get to the junction. But he then heard a whistle. His driver stopped him, and then got out and looked behind them. Oh no, said his driver. There's a fast-moving train coming, and it's on our line! What do we do? exclaimed Diesel 10. We'll have to try and go through the snowdrift, said his driver. Diesel's driver got back in, and they started in the opposite direction. Diesel 10 tried to pick up as much speed as he could. He would have to gain enough momentum if he was to break through the snow. The bridge lay dead ahead of him. Well, here goes nothing, said his driver. Diesel 10 charged at the snowdrift. And derailed at the other side. Luckily for Murdoch, there was nothing blocking the line. Later, Sir Topham Hat drove up to the scene. What in the name of Lord Harry happened, he said. Well, we were just coming down the line, said Diesel's driver, trying to sound truthful, and we then saw this huge snowdrift and couldn't stop in time. Well, how did the snow even get here in the first place? asked Sir Tapham Hat. The line was plowed this morning. Well, uh, it must have fallen from above the bridge, said the driver nervously. We're just as confused as you. Hmm, said Sir Tapham Hat. Well then, I'll go phone for the breakdown train, you wait here. He then walked back to his car. Something isn't right here, he thought to himself. I just don't know what. Diesel 10, on the other hand, felt that Sir Topham Hat very well did know what.